Hi, I'm Kate McKay, and welcome back to Survive to Thrive. Today, I will be interviewing Christina Ricci. Welcome, Christina. Hey, Kate. How are you? So I don't even know where to start with her, but I'm going to read a little bit of her bio, and then she's going to talk herself. But the most important thing I want you to know is she's a, a golf pro, and she's absolutely incredible. Why do I say that? Because if she can coach me, she can coach anybody, because <laughs> I'm terrible. No, you're not. Oh, my gosh. So let me just read a little bit about her, and we're going to get on into it. So Christina Ricci is a LPGA, Class A, Golf Level 3, Power Level 2, and Fitness Level 2 performance coach. She's, uh, I didn't know you were CrossFit coach, trainer. Level 2. And best-selling golf author. She's going to talk about her books. Um, with four instructional books, um, she took up the game in 2000 and dropped to a five handicap in the five short years. She's out of control. She does golf camps all over the place, which she's obviously had to pivot with what is going on now. Because here we are, May 8th. It's a whole new golf game. And so she lives <laughs> close to me. She has her YouTube channels and Instagram and instructional videos on and on. So we'll be sharing those in the show notes. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Ah, thanks for having me on. This is awesome. I know. So I'm super psyched. So when I first um, talked to Christina and she is a fellow uh, CrossFit girl with me. So mm -hmm. a fellow warrior. When I first asked Christina, she goes, well, you want me on? Like, I'm like a golf pro. And I'm like, oh. I said, the bottom line is, isn't golf symbolic of life? Right. I mean, you hear it all the time. Golf is metaphor. True, so that's true. Why I was like, girlfriend, no, you are coming on. Plus you are one badass. So I'm <laughs> thrilled to have you here. So how is it going? How are you managing both personally and professionally? Again, May 8th, 2020 pandemic, everything has changed for all of us. Well, I was in Arizona hosting camps. I had eight camps on the docket. I ran two, and then I had to run home. <laughs> right. I had to jump on that airplane before they said, you can't fly anymore. So I just had to cancel all my camps, unfortunately. Everybody bailed anyway because they were petrified of flying. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't blame them. Right. So I had to fly home, and I'm like, now what? <laughs> Everything was closed. It was like every day was a holiday, the worst circumstances. But I felt like, wow, every day is like a holiday. Nothing's open. Nothing's over. So it gave me plenty of time to do stuff I never could do. Yeah, right? <laughs> like I dug so up the yard. I got back. I cleaned up my website. And then I started thinking, okay, now what? Right. You know, I don't have, I put all my eggs in the camp basket. Now what? Wow. Right? So I immediately pivot and say, online. Right. You know, that's where everybody is anyway. You know, so I can coach anyone anywhere around the world. So I launched a more pars coach program, which I'm really excited about. Yeah. So I don't care if you live in New Zealand, Sweden, UK, more pars. <laughs> exactly. It's so true. It's so true. Because your energy comes through. And I think that when you said, I don't know what, you know, when I first called you, you were like, I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm like, nah, yeah, you do. Because you were one of the first people I actually reached out when I started this podcast in, you know, at the end of March. Went, oh, no, I'm going to interview her. Because I know <laughs> within days that you were going to make Manifest and find a way to pivot. So you have to. I know. It's beautiful. Um, you're um, a strong presence and you have a lot of uh, product that you already do. The service was obviously you as a golf pro. Yeah. Number one thing I'd like to say about you and completely honor you on is that not only are you a warrior, but you're fun. And you're approachable. And I think that is really, truly the gift of who you are, Christina. And I just want to thank and honor well, you. Well, thank that. you. Yeah. It's really nice that you recognize that because that really is the cornerstone of my platform. Because if you're not having fun, why are you doing it? <laughs> yeah, and same with me, right? It's That's absolutely true. So let's just get into it a little bit. I, um, so when we're thinking about, like, literally, and like I read, in 2005, 2000 or 2005? 2000, I started the game. Yeah, and then five years, five par. Yeah, so, okay. So tell me, how did you get- I've handicapped. Yeah. <laughs> five par. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get you educated on the lingo. I know, my God, it's lame. It's embarrassing, but, um, <laughs> but I will learn because I pulled my clubs up. Oh, good. So, um, so when you, before that, talk to me a little bit about your athletic background and were you, part two, born with that fire? 
Good question. Great question. <laughs> well, the easy part is uh, athletics. I, I did everything. Track, softball, tennis, field hockey, everything but golf. Wow. <laughs> so anything hand-eye, I was really fast. I was a sprinter. You know, so I had it in me. Yep. So that was easy. When I picked up the stick in Florida, it was love at first strike. Yeah, great. <laughs> right. So because I didn't have anything at that point, it was just, yeah, I'll go to the gym, but I didn't have any sport. Wow. So golf kind of filled that void that I, I, I love sports. Mm -hmm. right? So I definitely took up the game and loved it the minute I struck that ball. Right. And what was so the what, other question? Yeah. So what was it though? So the, the, the piece that I'm curious about is, because I love, I think the fundamental reason why I've been so resilient is because I understand um, grit and I understand athletic mindset. In fact, I get off on the whole concept of it, right? Mm. And it's like how you teach it is basically what we do as a coach. It doesn't matter if I'm coaching, you know, a 20 year old, or you know, in fitness or biz, you know, business development or healing from trauma, right? It's all the way of how we able to scope in the mind and get the heart and the mind in alignment. And that is something that I think part of it in a big way is you're born with, but I do believe you can foster it. Oh, so were you always had that drive and is every day a new day for you, Christina, to conquer something else? Absolutely. Yeah. Love it. I like getting things done. Right. I'm a creator. I create things. If I'm right. not creating something, I'm in trouble. <laughs> yeah, right. right. I'm bored. Yeah. Right, exactly. So the boredom is not the thing. So you were always hungry to create and you were always hungry to achieve. So it's just something that's innate in you. For sure, definitely. That's great. My father was an entrepreneur. I have that spirit. Your dad. Oh, that's awesome. That's great. And so it, when you're coaching people, how do you tap into that with people? What is your like way? Like, are you noticing like, their emotional state or their physical state or is there a all of it that you have I, I have a really good intuition i can read people really well wow okay yeah so I, if i can be in a group of 10 people and i can literally they're going to feel like they're the only person on that range because i can really tap into them you know so i really zone into them and it's only them when i'm with them all right so and there's a lot of different personalities when you're coaching so you have to deal with that right. and i'm I feel like I have that talent to be able to do that. And I'm fortunate. Yeah. That's so why I love doing it because there are so many different personalities. Everybody learns differently. Mm -hmm. So you have to communicate to students and players in a individual way. It's not a cookie cutter situation where mm -hmm. you talk the same language to everyone because not everyone's going to understand you. No. So if you communicate to that person, you really care about that person. That's the key for me. I care about people. I really want to see them get more pars. <laughs> I do. You want to see them win. I mean, yeah, win. win. Yeah. A lot of my players aren't like super competitive. Yeah. You know, they're, they just want to get more powers. They just want to have fun. They want to have fun. And hit the ball really good. Yeah. So when I spoke at your event, that's what I loved is like, you know, you're sitting with a group of people that are your clients, right? And I'm talking to your peeps and just seeing that. And it seems that everyone wants to feel more confident. Yep. Right. I mean, Huge. it seems like that's the name of the game and you got to have it in golf. Got to have it in life. You got to have it right now. Like right now what's going on in the world. Confidence is key. And it's not this phony confidence. It's like knowing why you're here and how powerfully you can communicate your message and your passion to inspire, motivate, whatever your verb is, as many people as possible. That's, that's right. basically my goal, right? And yours too. So, um, so how, were you always confident? No. No. No, I was super shy when I was little. No, I used to hide not. behind my brother, like literally. <laughs> no. I was a shadow because he's 13 months older. I was just right behind him. I was so shy. So shy for a long time. Wow. Very, like way up until mid high school. Wow. I'm an it's introvert, so believe it or not. Well, yeah, I think oftentimes the most. You know, Oprah Winfrey is an introvert. Oh, really? Yeah, and you would be like, no way. I'm actually more of an introvert than I am an extrovert, you know? So people are like, there's no way you can be. I'm like, no, I need to be by myself <laughs> quite a bit. Yeah. It's very important for me to restore because that's my creative time. Exactly, I'm the same. same as you. And so was there something that shifted for you and what helped you build that confidence, do you think? Uh, I think being good at something. Mm. And wanting to share that and have the ability to share it in a way that 
resonates with people. So maybe my, uh, before this, before golf, I was into graphics and marketing and whatnot, and I was pretty good at it. So I guess that gave me some confidence. And then just from building from there, seeing success as a golfer, yeah, uh, gave, gives you confidence. You know, being successful as a golfer, golfer gives you confidence, not only in the game, but in life. Yeah. It's one of those games yeah. that when you're playing well, and this was for me personally, I don't know about everybody else. When I'm playing well, I actually feel good about everything else. Yeah. <laughs> and when wow. I wasn't, which was a little unbalanced, when I wasn't playing well, I, I just felt like my entire life was horrible. And, so and that can, a little obsessive, you got to watch the balance with the, the golf because it can mm -hmm. get you like that. Mm -hmm. But golf in general provided a lot of confidence for me. Right. And then it was a learning thing because I wasn't always confident. Right. Yeah. And you said that in high school, like that, that was more of a confidence issue and the shyness. What was it in high school that shifted for you? Because I think a lot of people think, oh my gosh, you know, Christina, everything comes easy to you. You're so talented. You can do any, you, every, everything you pick up that has a ball using high end cord, everything artistic you're so good at. You get along so well with people, right? These are the stories that people are say about you by all appearances in all honesty you know you're beautiful you're friendly like all of these things and i think most confident people had to go through something you know and for you to share that you weren't that confident person you know so was yeah. it sport in high school or what was it that was the bridge or just maturity i think maturity and uh i have to dig deep here hold on <laughs> <laughs> I think the social, because I was so shy when I was younger, mm -hmm. I would say the fifth to eighth grade was real rough because of the, the, the clicky groups, mm -hmm. you know, it was really tough for me. And then moving into high school, I still had that kind of fear. And then I started to, you know, we went, I went to a small school, it was only 250 kids. Mm -hmm. So I think having, um, more of a social, uh, environment where where it wasn't clicky anymore mm -hmm. kind of got rid of that click thing that i was going through in the fifth and eighth grade because you know kids can be mean yeah really, and they were mean yeah. to me yeah you oh, know for no reason so just mad. because i was just shy and maybe didn't stand so up for mad. myself yeah i, I, I didn't protected like you if i was around thank you <laughs> no one messes my with my christina so well i think that's also like middle school is perfectly symbolic too like what we were talking about before we hit record which is like right now right um you know it's everyone we're going through the grief cycle let's just get real like the whole planet is like what is going on i'm walking through downtown newburyport and it's like dresden and i'm looking through the store windows and i'm like whoa <laughs> you know like yeah. it just keeps i keep on having like these reality kind of experiences right and i think that um you know like you say middle school it's like the world, like, it's like, it doesn't feel like a safe haven, you know, like, who am I now, you know, and, and as we were talking about, like, right now, it's like, boom, there's been a massive explosion. And truly, we're, it's a great leveler. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. So what would you say, what would you um, like to share? Or what kind of um, tips would you, you know, metaphorically speaking, applying to golf, that you want people to know and steps that they can take to overcome their fear, their hesitation, their lack of confidence, their inability to get out of their own way, their, you know, like all of these things that you're seeing in these people as they're hobbling, you know, like shaking right there with the, with the club. Absolutely. It's, it's, uh, get help. Seriously. Mm. Cause a lot of players try to do it themselves. Mm. And to me, knowledge is power. When you know how to do something and you know why you're doing it, it gives you a lot of confidence mm. when you don't know what you're doing or why you're doing it, or why the ball's going left, or why you can't get the ball off the ground when you strike it, it gets mm. frustrating. Mm. So I love online because it opens up a whole new world for people to get tips, mm. which is phenomenal. The only little negative I'll say about that is there is a lot of information out there, and if you're inexperienced, and even if you are experienced, I'm finding that a lot of players are misdiagnosing themselves. Mm -hmm. So they, the ball's going left. So they think it's one thing. So they're looking at all these tips about how not to come over the top or, Ooh, it's my alignment. And it could be something totally different. So right. I always recommend to get professional help, no matter what, whether it's golf, tennis, whatever vocation. Yeah. Or a coach for hobby anything. or anything. 
with anything, right? And that's what I just love. And I think that you and I have a book in the making because I think that everything that you're saying, I'm like, oh yeah, that applies. Oh yeah, that applies, you know, to personal development, you know? So it's like getting help. You have to bring someone in that's going to hold you accountable for it and figure out what it is you want right. and how, you know, how you want to hit that ball and, and what small adjustments, because we get all kinds of foxholes. We have the negative voice saying you can't do it. We have our mother, our father, our sister and brother saying, who do you think you are? Like whatever that noise is. And that's something that we have to learn to manage in golf and in regular life. You that's know? right. So I love it. So getting help, the what and the why, very, very important. So, and I think that also the whole idea about being discerning about where you're getting information is an important point. Exactly. Right. You so really got to know what the source is. Is that person a professional golf instructor? Mm -hmm. Are they LPGA, PGA, TPI? That's important. Yeah. Because there's Absolutely. a lot of instruction out there that's not great. Yeah. Right? So you got to be careful. Yeah. And, and, and mess you up pretty good. You know? Yeah. Because then you're just kind of like ch a dog chasing your tail. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, maybe you'll hit a good one day, but then the next day you're like, ah, oh, that didn't work. See, that's the thing. A lot of players are looking for that quick fix. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm fixed. And that's not how it works. So when why we're learning, Because yeah, so we're why learning not? something. Huh? <laughs> why isn't one thing going to fix everything? Christina? Yeah, that's because it's not the way we learn. <laughs> so that's why it's really important to work with a professional that can supervise mm. <laughs> your learning and help you achieve what you want faster. Mm. So you're not wasting time. Oh, so you can get more so pars. Good. So you can hit a so, bar. Yeah. So viewers and listeners, where in your life are you needing someone to come in and supervise your learning golf game or anywhere else? We need partners to elevate. Christina, you've had coaches. Oh yeah. Can't live without a coach. A great coach or great performer in life has to have a coach. Um, I have tons of friends. I could have them cheer me on and, you know, and, and, and drive me and get me all excited. They weren't implanted with my dream. Christina, your dream is something very unique. So you can't depend on other people to hold that dream for you. We got to rise up together and we need someone that's above us that can guide us and supervise us to our success. It's that's absolutely right. essential. And it doesn't matter if, oh my gosh, right now we have to all reinvent ourselves and what's that going to look like. And I highly recommend don't wait to get the perfect swing before you start hitting balls in life. That's God, right. Start swinging right now. It's okay for failures. It's okay to try things that aren't going to work. But, you know, making sure you have your tribe of people, the coach, your, the right support of people to a game. Now, that's important, an important point you just brought up. People are afraid to make mistakes. Mm. You know, if they make a mistake on the golf course or they keep hitting bad balls, they're not looking at it as a learning opportunity. Your brain physically learns when you make mistakes. It mm -hmm. learns when you hit the ball well because there's a reference point. This is not good. This is good. So let's put them together and make the right connection. All right. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid of miss hitting a shot because your brain is actually learning. Mm -hmm. The key is where players, I think it's frustrated is when they can't figure out why, mm -hmm. right? why am I hitting the ball like this? That's the frustration. Mm -hmm. So if you at least know why the ball goes left, Oh, I'm not getting to my finish. I get it. Yeah. Ooh, or I'm coming over the top. Ah, uh, I got to work on this drill that Christina told me to work on. I, I fell off track. Yeah. You know, at least if you know and you have a game plan, you can go after it. But if you're shooting from the hip and you have no idea, that's where the frustration comes in. And, then, and I'll blame you. Right. Get help. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And then, and I think I've heard all, all, also too, because oftentimes we're playing in groups um, that people feel judgment. Okay. That's common in anything we do in life. Right. Oh my gosh. They're watching. Oh my gosh. I'm slowing down the whole, you know, I'm taking too long, too many swings. I'm blowing it. Right. So how do you manage self-talk and how would you recommend? Because I referred somebody to you that we know and love together who has horrific self, um, self negative self-talk and he's an amazing individual. And I'm always yes. like, come on. You're right. He's a dear friend of mine. And I know he totally values you, but it seemed like his, his biggest issue was the self-talk. Yeah. He's a, he's a great player. 
but he would doubt himself on the course and he wouldn't trust his instincts. Mm. That's the key. You get really got to trust your instincts on the golf course. And if you're unclear about something, like we said, get help. Mm, that's great. And did, do you recommend, um, like when you see, what do you say to people who you see aren't trusting? Self-talk. So the self-talk and trust go hand in hand. So after a bad shot, it's really important to have a routine. So you're going to be very specific on what you want to do. What do you want to do? Be very specific and do this behind the ball, looking out towards the target. All right? We call mm -hmm. this a pre-shot routine. This helps you get into a zone. Mm -hmm. All right, you're just focused on the target and the task at hand. Mm -hmm. All right, and then you go up, you get it, you address the golf ball. All right, and then just before you take the call back, you go donut. I wish I had my donut here. Where's my donut? <laughs> Upstairs. I have a little donut. So the donut represents zero. Yeah. All right, you have to go donut in your head. You got to clear your mind. You got to shut your mind off because <laughs> a lot of players think mid swing. And they have like five swing thoughts mid swing, and oh. the swing's only one second. Yeah. <laughs> so it's impossible to strike the ball when you're thinking, period. Wow. Whether you're doing it just before you take the club back or mid swing. Mm -hmm. All right. That's where players go off. And then when they finish their shot and their ball wasn't what they expected, they get upset. I see a lot of players before, they're, before their swing is even done, they're already like, Ugh. Yes. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> All right, so instead, you got to... That stunk. That was terrible, Christina. <laughs> and you're like, patience is Job. <laughs> yeah, but you're missing an opportunity when you don't... Yes. Say, All right, that ball just dribbled down the fairway. Cool. Well, maybe not that cool, but what could I, what could I have done better? Right. Like, have take that moment to learn mm -hmm. because that was a mistake. No problem. Everyone makes mistakes. What would you have done if you had a mulligan? Yeah. Right? Replay it in your head and store that. Mm, where players go right. off, seriously, where players go off is they hit a lot of bad shots and they really emotionally get themselves attached to that, those poor outcomes. And that gets into your brain and causes the yips. It causes fear. It causes more bad shots. Yeah. So you got to let those bad shots go. Right. Learn yeah. from them first. Right. And then say, see you later. Yeah, right. And that's like, and that's so symbolic because that's so true of no matter what you're doing in your life that, you know, we get so caught up. And I think that that's why this time is so important that every decision you're going to make, there will potentially be failures. So, so there's a lot of people out there that have never even thought about, hey, listen, entrepreneurship or really following their dreams or passions. They were thinking, I'm going to do this job for 30 years or 20 years or 40 years or whatever that is. So now we're giving it an opportunity. And I wrote down all these steps, which I will be sending you because I think this is our outline um, of all <laughs> the different steps that we can take. And it's you can't, um, you can't really know what the zone feels like if you're not clear on your why. That's really important. Like, why are you doing it? What is the reason? And how are you doing it? And then being able to follow through. I love the donut image. That's really powerful. It's important to, to empty your mind mm -hmm. when you're swinging. Do you, you have, have a to. meditation practice, curiosity? I don't sit and meditate, but I have uh, ways of, of zoning out and meditating. And believe it or not, golf, I meditate. When I, when I play golf, like in the afternoon, I'm by myself. I'm shooting my videos. I'm in the zone. I'm in like meditative zone. Wow. It's not like a, a meditation. It's not like meditation. Right. But it's my Time mind is clear and I'm just in that kind of zone. And is it like time is strange and all that? It's yeah, like, there's oh, no time. No time. Oh. Meaning That's just time, does, the, the time doesn't matter. Except, Shoot. you know, the only thing I'm fighting is the sun. Right. <laughs> right. Because of the light. That's that, it. That is so cool. No, but meditation is key. You know, I garden I meditate that way. I just, for me to sit down and meditate, you wouldn't be it's, not, it's not for me. No, and, and that's cool. I mean, there is all different kinds of meditation and it's just being present, really. It's like sometimes for people, it's just learning how to be present in their being. And right. And how cool that you actually have it to be a moving meditation. It is. It's a moving yeah. meditation. I meditate in the car. Yeah. Believe it or not, when I'm just zoning out driving. Yeah. I'm in a zone. 
Yeah. And thoughts come thoughts come to me too. I have great ideas in the car. Right. Not in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. We can solve world hunger in that in those areas. No, yeah, seriously, because then you're you're open. Mm-hmm. True. Well, that, you know, that's what meditation is. You're you're being open to the universe, what's coming in. Mm-hmm. Right. That's to me. Right? What's the point of meditation? Yeah. To find exactly. your center. Mm-hmm. Balance. Yeah. Purpose. Mm-hmm. And, and allowing it to come in and infiltrate. Exactly. It doesn't have to be a fight. No. Nope. Doesn't, doesn't have if to you be fight a fight. it, you're not going to get it. <laughs> no, you're not going to get it. No, it's going to be ugly. It's going to go down ugly. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get a lot of triple bogeys. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, a lot God. of three putts. Yeah. No, I don't want that. I don't <laughs> want that. So is there any last minute thoughts or, you know, clearly I want you to share how people can find you, but is there any last minute thoughts that you want to share with our viewers and listeners? Golf. This is for golfers. Never forget that golf is just a game. <laughs> All right. And get help. All right, because I know if you're a golfer and you're into it, you want to strike the ball really well. You want to chip it really well. You want to make more one and two putts, and you want more pars. All right, so I'll just segue right into how you're going to do that. You're going to head to more, <laughs> morepars.com and sign up for my More Pars Coach Program so I can coach you from anywhere. All right, you can sign up for one of my camps. Head to Christina Richie Golf. Dot com. I post weekly on my YouTube channel. Just go YouTube, more pars. Just search for me, more pars. Kate will put the link below, and then Instagram as well. Yeah. So she does. She's hysterical. In fact, I, we got to add into the notes your um, Wonder Woman uh, video. I couldn't get enough of that one. That was hysterical. That was funny. Oh my gosh, that was brilliant. You got you are one creative person. You surprised me at all the goodness you got going on, friend. I love it. So any viewers or listening listeners, you know, clearly, even if you're not a golf player, there's so much information in this. This golf is a metaphor, right? And so in any ways that you feel like you're struggling with a challenge, reach out. Reach out to Christina. She's a coach, right? She can help you learn personal growth and development through the golf game it's like it really helped me because i'm not a patient gentle person to myself and i can't be that energy if i want to play a good game that's true you do need patience that is one thing that i wrote that down i added that as a tip so all right awesome well christina thank you so much for joining me today i really truly appreciate you now this was a great chat thank you thank you so much And thank you, viewers and listeners, for joining me on Survive to Thrive. We'll see you next time. Take good care.